culture sings a worship song and in that song she begins to speak spontaneously and she's talking about it's hard to wear a crown when you're in the presence of God and your head is bowed low and we need to humble ourselves in his presence when he begins to pour out his spirit upon us we need to humble ourselves because we can't accept what he's trying to pour out if we're all high and mighty if we're all about ourselves because it ain't about us it's about him amen so it's hard to keep a crown on your head when your head is bowed low in his presence. Amen? So like I said last Sunday, we started on the prayer of Jabez, and we're going to continue in that area today. So a little review, we talked about being honorable. Amen? So go ahead and turn your Bibles to 1 Chronicles 4, verses 9 and 10. And where did my water go? And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I buried him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Father God, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for your presence that's in this house right now. So, Father, I'm asking right now that you just move me out of the way, Lord. Hide me behind your cross and use my mouth for you, Lord, to speak your word to your people. Don't let me say a thing that is about in me, from me, but let it all be from you, straight from heaven, Lord. I give you honor. I give you praise, Jesus. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the blood that you shed. I thank you for your resurrection, Lord. I thank you for victory over the enemy and anything that comes against. I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper in your name, Lord. In your name, sweet Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. So like I said like Sunday, we're going to be in this for a little bit. Because we really need to grab a hold of this. Amen? You know, we've been going through some things. We've been going through some things. And we look around and we're like, where's the reward? Where's the victory? What's going on, Lord? But you got to hold on. And you've got to pray. And you've got to keep seeking. You've got to come into agreement with who God is and who you are in God before you can make it. Amen. Once you come into that agreement, then you understand what's been going on. You understand what's coming against you and why it's coming against you. And in that thing in this world where the enemy tried to destroy what God has placed in you. What God has placed in you. The calling he has put on your life. The assignment that he has given you. Amen. The enemy will like nothing but to destroy the assignment that has been given to you. So if you remember, <coughs> that will get my soul going on, I'm going to preach. <coughs> if you remember, Jabez, what is the meaning of his name? What does it mean? It means to make sorrowful. When Jabez's mother gave birth to him, it was a terrible time for her. Maybe she had more pain with him than normal. Maybe it was pain in her life in general. But when he was born, she looked at him and she named him Jabez. So the very, the very mention of his name, the very thought of his name brought pain. It brought remembrance of pain and sorrow. But what I love about these two scriptures that's in the middle of these numbers names that God is calling out. And he stops and he says, take notice. Take notice of this man, Jabez. Take notice of what he done, where he was at in his life, and how I turned it around. Amen? Yeah. Do you believe that God can turn any situation around? Yeah. For those that believe in Him? Yeah. For those that love Him? Yeah. For those that are faithful to Him? Yeah. Yeah. 
You see, what you also need to understand is that it was Hebrew custom that whatever was going on around them at the time of the birth is how they got their names. Yeah. And here's another thing. Their names spoke of a pathway that they would take in life. A spiritual pathway. So his mother, out of her grief and sorrow, assigns a pathway to him of pain and sorrow. Are y'all following me? What we speak over our children, what we speak over each other, a sign of spiritual pathway. It is signs of spiritual pathway for you saying this is where you're going, Jen. This is what you're speaking, and this is where you are headed. I'm telling you today, speak life. Speak life. Speak life. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you were born into, Harold. It doesn't matter what the world says about you. It doesn't matter what the enemy says about you. All that matters is that you come into agreement and you understand who God is and what he wants to do with you. Not for you, but use you for his glory. Everything that we do, every word that we speak, every song that we sing, everywhere we go should bring him glory. For the Bible says we all fell short of the glory of God. But there's this thing called mercy and grace that's renewed. It's renewed. It's renewed. That's why you got to humble yourself. I'm not a bag of chips in the soda. I'm not all that I thought I was. Lord, I need you. I need you. Amen. Amen. So Jabez, in all of the turmoil in his life, all the pain and the sorrow, he cried out to God. And he said, Oh, God, would you bless me indeed? Bless me indeed. Right in the middle of it all. Amen? So if you look at the word indeed, first of all, in the Hebrew language, that's like putting a whole line of exclamation marks after what you said. There's some emphasis on this bless me. There's some major emphasis on this bless me. See, a lot of times we get down and we pray, and we don't put no emphasis on what we're praying for. We don't put no emphasis on, Lord, I believe you can move. Lord, I believe you can do it. Well, Lord, if it be thy will, you get out of here with that nonsense around me. Because let me tell you something, a prayer warrior knows how to reach heaven. A prayer warrior knows how to get on their face. A prayer warrior knows how to put some emphasis on what they're praying for. Jabez had come into agreement with God. And once you come into agreement with God, then your will becomes his will. Amen. So Romans 8, 28 tells us that God can take any circumstance and he can turn it around Amen. and work it. Work it out for the good. Work it out for his good. You see, God gets glory from it, Harold. If he's in it, if he's working in it, and he's moving in it, he'll get the glory for it. You won't get the glory, but he will. Amen. <clears throat> so I want you to understand something, that Jabez can be a person or he can be a thing. He can be a person that has spoke something against you, Jeff. He can be a thing that's standing in your pathway. But nevertheless, it is a pathway that you are on. And it is your spiritual walk with God. And you can either come out in deliverance, you can come out free of it all, or you can let it continue to drag you down the wrong pathway. Because if you head down God's pathway, and you accept when he's dealing with you, when he's trying to turn tables over in your spirit, when he's trying to line you up with his word instead of getting rebellious and fighting. If we would just surrender, there's that word again, surrender. If we would just surrender to him and let him do what he needs to be done, what he needs to do. And the fight wouldn't be as hard as it is. But it's hard when you're fighting with your flesh. And you're fighting with your flesh. And your spirit man's trying to rise up. Did anybody read my post on, on Facebook about your spiritual closets? How you just keep cramming stuff in there and cramming stuff in there. And the next thing you know, you can't get to what you need because all the junk has got it covered up. It's time to clean out our spiritual closets. It's time to come in agreement with God and his word. It's time to move those Jabez's out of our life. The pain, the sorrow, and walking in victory that Jesus shed his blood for. Hmm. <clears throat> but see, 
When Jabez called out to God, when he came into that agreement, God turned it all around. And he gave him a life full of honor, a dignity, a life worthy for God to look down and say, that's mine. That he's bringing me honor. How do you know that, Pastor? Because I read it in verse 9, and it says that Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. You see, what you've got to understand in these two verses is that this is the beginning and this is the end. The end was come first, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And then the beginning was when his mother named him, and he was full of pain and he was full of sorrow. Are you following me? We've got to start speaking life into our situations. This prayer is a life changing prayer. It will bring curses, it will bring deliverance, and it will help you prosper. And I'm not talking about money in your bank account, I'm talking about your spirit. Your, Your spirit prospering. Amen? But see, what I've learned from JBS's prayer. Is that some, there's some things you got to line up before you can get there. God was honored in this prayer. He was honored in this prayer. Why was he honored? Because first of all, Jabez was calling on the right one. Amen. The right person. He was asking for the right things. And he did it with the right attitude. Come on. He did it with the right attitude. Amen. Go to 1 Kings chapter 3. You see, Solomon was another one that had a request before God. And God granted that request. Why? Because Solomon asked for the right thing. He asked the right person for the right thing with the right attitude. Let's read it. 1 Kings chapter 3. (coughs) Thank you, Lord. When y'all got it, say amen. 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 See, it's so funny because normally y'all know that Sister Bobby puts my scriptures on the TV and I just turn around and read it. I don't have to flip back and forth. But as I was preparing this message last night, I heard the Spirit say, put it on your paper. Because I never do that, Lizzie. You know me. You know how I am. Guess what? I put it on my paper because Bobby forgot her laptop. Ain't God good, church? Ain't he good? That I don't have to stay here? He'll warn you. He'll try to prepare you for what tomorrow's bringing, but you gotta listen to him. Hallelujah. That's okay, I'll shout by myself. (laughs) First Kings chapter 3. It says, And Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, That hath shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he has walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Do you understand what he's doing? He's giving God some glory. He's giving him some praise. He's giving him some honor. Amen? Amen. It says, And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. He's humbling himself. He's humbling himself. I know not how to go out or come in. <clears throat> and thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? So he's humbled himself. He's admitted to God. I can't do this without you. First of all, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. But I know with you, God, you can help me. Amen? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. God was happy. He was pleased with what Solomon asked for. If God is pleased with what you're asking for, he'll grant your request. Amen? And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked for riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but thou hast asked for thy 
thyself understanding to discern judgment. You see, that was his assignment. It was Solomon's assignment to sit on that throne and to judge and to help the people do right, to lead them in a spiritual pathway that took them to God. It was not to sit there and get all the praise and all the glory and all the honor because it was King Solomon. He had a job to do. He had an assignment to do. And he understood what that assignment was. And he understood that without God, he couldn't do it. So he asked for wisdom. Teach me how to lead your people. Teach me how to bring somebody to you, Lord. Teach me the words to speak when I'm out there walking those streets. Teach me what to say, God, when I come in contact with those that are without hope. Teach me, God. So that I can bring you glory. So that I can do this assignment that you have placed on my life. Amen. So God's telling him, because you didn't ask for all this other stuff, I'm going to give you this wisdom. But verse 12 says, Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given me a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. <clears throat> and this is what God also tells him. He says, And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked for. Come on, somebody. Both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. You see, when you put aside the nonsense, you put aside the things that you think you need, the things that you want, and you ask God for what you really need to increase his kingdom, he'll grant that request. And when he grants that request, he'll bring the rest with it. Do you understand that when he blesses you, hell can't touch it. Hell can't touch it. They'll try to come against it, but they can't stop it. See, the devil has his own blessings. He wants to lay down in the lap, Harold. Come on. Here we go. Everybody here. And they'll look real pretty. They'll look real pretty. They'll come in the shape of a dog. Come they'll on. come in the shape of a vehicle. Come they'll come in the shape of a better looking bank account. You see, God ain't in that. <laughs> God ain't in that. Amen. He ain't in that. Because what happens when you take the devil's blessings? It leads you to hell. But when you take God's blessings, when God has blessed it, the devil can't touch it. The Come devil on. can't have it. Do you understand Amen. what I'm saying today? Come on. Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> so Solomon became great just like God said. Said he was the richest. He had it all. But he had the most wisdom. Because he asked the right person the right thing with the right attitude. Amen? Amen? Just like David is. So we got to recognize who God is in our lives. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Once Jabez realized who he was, he became a man of great ambition. He became a man of strong faith. And he became a mighty prayer warrior. Amen? Amen? So let's talk about the actual prayer. I told you we would be in this several Sundays. Amen? It's amazing how you can get this is sermon number two out of two scriptures. Amen. That just goes to show you when you sit down and you dissect the word of God instead of just reading it and putting it down. Well, I've read my chapter tonight. I've read my verses tonight. But you really let it speak to you and you really dig into it, what's going to happen. Amen. <clears throat> the prayer of Jabez holds four key points. Number one, God bless him. Number two, expansion of territory. Number three, the presence of God's hand and protection from evil. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. So we're going to start with the first one. We're going to talk about blessing. Amen? That's what we're going to study today. <clears throat> the definition of blessed is to make or declare holy by a spoken formula or a sign. Hallow or contemplate. Do y'all know what contemplate means? Set apart. To ask divine favor for. To make happy or prosperous. 
to favor or endow, to praise or glorify. So we bless the Lord, right? Amen. We praise Him, we glorify Him. But when God blesses us, we pick up favor, God's favor. We become happy. We become prosperous. Do you understand that when God blesses you, when it's truly God who blesses you, that it's going to pour out? Every person that we come in contact is going to say, what's going on that girl? She's got some. How can she smile right now when the building's on fire? How can she smile in all of this turmoil? How can she give God praise when everything's crashing around around her? It's because of the blessing. And it pours out. That's what the blessing's for. It's not to give you money in the bank. It's not to give you a fancy car to drive. It's to give you something that's on the inside of you, that's in your spirit, man, that will set people on the right spiritual pathway. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everything that God gives you is to glorify Him, is to increase His kingdom. So stop praying for a big bank account. Stop praying for a fancy house or a car. Start praying for God to send somebody your way that you can lead to heaven. You need to understand that when the favor of God is on you, you can walk into a job interview. They can be 10 more applicants that's better qualified, had more experience, maybe doing that exact position somewhere else at this very time. But God's favor will say, no, uh, it's yeah. that one. Uh, I sent that one in there. And uh, that's the one that's going to walk out with the, with the job. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what God's favor does for you. Amen. Because when you just ask for him to bless you, to use you, to increase you, to, to use you more for his kingdom, then he brings the rest of it with it. Now, I'm not telling you to ask for his blessing because this stuff's going to follow it. You might never have a fancy bank account. Big heavy bank account. You might never drive a big fancy car, but you might lead hundreds to Jesus. You might lead thousands to Jesus. You might increase the kingdom daily, and that's what it's all about. As Christians, as believers, we are out here working to increase the kingdom. Amen. That is our assignment. Yes. Y'all, Lord have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Go to Genesis 1. <clears throat> Genesis 1, verse 26. God wants to bless us. How do I know this? It's real simple. It's in the scripture. Amen. Genesis 1, verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image and to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. The image of God created he them. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. What did God do? He blessed them. That was the very first thing after he created man was he blessed them. And how did he bless them, Ernie? God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over every, the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. He gave them everything they needed to survive. When God blesses you, he is giving you everything you need to survive. Amen? Amen. Amen. Verse 28 said, And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, replenish. Here's everything you need to eat. Here's everything you need to drink. Here's everything you need to survive. And I'll give you dominion over it. But we have to understand something. The blessing comes with great responsibility. And Adam didn't handle that responsibility very well. Eve didn't handle that responsibility very well. They let the enemy come in and destroy it. But you see, if you really hold on to who God is, and you really hold on to who you are in God, and you really hold on to your assignment, 
and you make up your mind that you're going to serve him no matter what, that you're going to follow him no matter what, the enemy won't stop you. The enemy won't stop you. The blessing's not affected by Satan. He's not affected by hell. What happens is, is that we buckle under the pressure. Come on, preacher. We buckle. Uh-huh. Instead of holding on to the fact that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, instead of holding on that I am blessed, Come instead on. of holding on that my God can do anything, and Jesus said the faith of a grain of a mustard seed can move mountains. You can speak to that mountain and say, get thee out of the way. Come with Jesus. Yeah, and we allow the enemy's lies to start putting stuff in our spiritual closets and hanging it up, making a home, mm-hmm. instead of saying, casting it down, casting down those vain thoughts, casting down those lies, like the Word tells us to do. We got ourselves a problem. We've lost our blessing. We're not walking in our blessing, amen? David said in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. What does that tell you? It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter who you're around. If you are walking with God, he's right there beside you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. And if you're on a spiritual pathway, that the Holy Spirit is telling you where to walk and what to say when you open your mouth around those that are coming against you, around that turmoil, it's going to make a difference. Amen? Amen. It's going to bring some joy. It's going to bring some deliverance. It's going to bring some peace. Hallelujah. You all, I got this word in me. I'm grabbing a hold of this thing. I'm grabbing a hold of this thing. Are you going to grab a hold of it with me? So you got to understand, with that blessing, it comes great responsibility. This is why. Blessing, the blessing brings greatness. And Satan's attracted to greatness. Come on. Come on. He's attracted to greatness. You see, when you have a dream like Joseph, Joseph's a dreamer. Uh, he knew from an early age he was destined for greatness. And he began to speak those dreams. And Satan heard him. He was listening. He said, Well, he said, the first thing I'm going to do is raise his brothers up against me. You see, Joseph had God's favor. We done a whole study on Joseph under Pastor Larry one time. You remember that reason? And he would give us quizzes. He would give us assignments. And we would come back the next week and he'd get out of this big long piece of paper and he'd start rattling off these questions because he knew who done the reading and who didn't. But what we learned in that study was that Joseph was a very good looking guy. He had the blessing. He had God's favor. And he never sinned. Well, I thought Jesus was the only one that didn't sin. You go read about Joseph and you come back and bring me scripture where he sinned. And we'll talk about it. That's a study for y'all to do. Why did he sin? Because he did not buckle under the pressure. He did not buckle on the weight of the blessing. See, the blessing's heavy. The blessing carries some things. And if you're not real careful, you get a hold of that blessing. It'll destroy you instead of help you. You'll let it go to your head. You see, Joseph could have let things go to his head. The enemy could have let, could have caused pride. A lot of people, when they start getting blessed and they're destined for greatness and they start walking in that greatness, pride rises up. I'm all this. I'm all that. I lived that one. I've done this for that one. I love what Brother Mike said today. God used me to put to perform healing on somebody. He didn't say, I led them. I healed them. He said, God used me. I do, I do not like hearing when a preacher or a minister says, I've led them to Christ. You didn't lead nobody nowhere, honey. The Word of God says that the Spirit draws. The Word of God says without the Spirit, there'll be no drawing. There'll be no getting to Jesus. The only thing you were was a willing vessel when you allowed the Spirit to work through you. I want to be a willing vessel that the Spirit works through. That when I talk to people, they don't see me, they see Jesus. Amen. Yes, hallelujah. Here's another thing that you have to understand is not everybody carries the blessing. Come on. 
Not everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, can bless you. Wow. Not everybody says that says I'm a child of God can lay their hand on me and bless you. Come on. That's why you need the sermon. But that's a whole other message. Hmm. Let's talk about the widow woman in Elijah. Here she was. She was a child of God, right? right. She was an Israelite. I was surrounded by Israel, so they're children of God. But this woman, in her desperation, was getting ready to die. She was getting ready to go in and cook the last that she had, Jess, all that she ever had. But she was going to feed her only son. They was going to shut the door, and they was going to die. Why? Because nobody could help them. Nobody around them could help them. But God. But God. Seen a man of God. Seen a man that was carrying the blessing. You see, Elijah carried the blessing of God. God was with him everywhere he went. He had God's favor. He understood his assignment. He understood who God was. He understood who he was with God. Amen. And he walked up to that house. He said, make me a cake. And she told him, he said, oh, God, I'm just about to feed me and my son. He was going to shut the door and die. But Elijah said, make me a little cake. The man of God spoke, and she obeyed. And then she obeyed. The blessing came. You gotta obey. You gotta surrender yourself, and you gotta obey what God is speaking to you. Quit listening to the destructions of the enemy. Quit listening to the lies of the enemy, and listen to the word of God. The Spirit speaking to you. No spirit but the Holy Spirit. No spirit but the Holy Spirit. No spirit but the Holy Spirit. Lead me and guide me. Yes, yes hallelujah. How did that all my so cold? There's a, a saying in the South, we all Southerners around here, ain't we? How about as country as it gets? My accent, my country twang. How ain't you been finally working? They'll say, well, hello, Stacy. And I'm like, that's not my name. I said, my name's Stephanie. How do you get Stacy from Stephanie? But anyway, it's the way I talk. I mispronounce a lot of words. I do. I ain't ashamed. I ain't ashamed of who I am. Mom. I'm ashamed. But there's this little saying that people like to say around here says, bless your heart. Bless your heart. That's Bobby. She's on call anyway. Bless your heart. <coughs> bless your heart. Sarcastic. Um, ain't nothing good in that. That means you need some help. <laughs> That don't mean I'm speaking something good over you. That means bless your heart. Y'all read between the lines? We gotta quit misusing that word. Amen. We gotta quit, we gotta quit using that, that word. So this is what I want to do. I want to stop right here because I don't want to go on to the next look that y'all keeping his hand on you. I don't want to go there today. I want to stop at blessing because we need to grab a hold of what blessing is. Yeah. So I want y'all to stand to your feet. <clears throat> and I'm going to read some scripture over you. Number six, starting at verse 22. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, on this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put your name upon the, the children of Israel, God's name upon the congregation of Remnant River Worship, and God will bless you. I want you to put your hand on top of your head right now. Father God, use my name to be a spiritual pathway. When people hear my name, I have a spiritual pathway for others to lead them to you to increase your kingdom. Let everybody that I come in contact, Lord, bless me in need, oh God. Put your blessing upon me. That way, everybody that I come in contact with, your blessing will pour out on them and they increase for your kingdom. Not for me, Lord, not for mine, but for you, God, will come in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you honor, we give you grace, we give, we give you glory, we give you, we give you honor, Father, for your grace and your mercy that you placed upon our life. 
Jesus, we thank you that each day is a new day. Each day that you wake us up, your mercy and your grace is renewed. Father, we thank you right now for the blood that you shed. But from this point on, we're in river worship. Let's go forward. Let's walk in the blessings of God. Let's teach somebody about Jesus. Let's stop letting the enemy tell us we're not worthy. Let's stop telling, let the enemy tell us that we died when Pastor Larry died. Let's stop listening to the lies that he's speaking. I speak lies. Thou shalt not die, but thou shalt live and declare the works of the Lord. From this moment forward, let's walk in that assignment. Let's walk where he tells us to go. Let's speak what he tells us to speak. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. i got to stop because if I get into the rest of it, I'll preach all day.